Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I've got a bit of a different video, one that I've honestly been like thinking about and working on for a longer than I would like to admit, but I actually really wanted to create like mock-up palettes for my favorite like books or plays based on the storybook palettes by Storybook Cosmetics. So if you don't know, Storybook Cosmetics, they're carrying now at Ulta, I believe. They started out as an indie makeup brand where they've created makeup palettes that looked like books, so you would actually open them up, and they would have a color story that matched whatever the book was supposed to be. They have a Mean Girls one, they have a Harry Potter, I mean, they, it's called Wizardry and Witchcraft, but that's to like skirt like copyright, but it's a Harry Potter palette. <laughs> Um, and they've done like really well and I honestly loved the idea and as someone who <laughs> has worked in a bookstore now works in publishing and loves books I couldn't resist the thought of like of making my own mock-up palettes in this style I was heavily inspired by both LS and Makeup Struggles I know Makeup Struggles no longer has their videos on their channel but she did an awesome series where she would um like reimagine palettes like make them better and I loved that series so much and then LS took it a step further she also did the same thing but she also went and like created her dream palette so she created what she thought like an amazing Urban Decay palette would be and I was just so inspired by that and so those are the two influences for this video I've done so for this video I've done two storybook palettes, one for a novel, actually it's like a series, and then one for a play. So we'll see how this video goes. If you guys are interested, I can definitely keep doing this because I love books. I have so many books I can keep doing this for. By the way, that book tour is coming. I wanted to make sure that we had the dog thank you for 3000 video up first. This should be coming within like the next week or so. But if you guys like this, I also have like other books like ready to go. It just takes me a while because I'm actually like creating these like kind of from scratch. So let's go ahead and jump into the first palette I made. So the first book series that I was actually really inspired to do this for is by Scott Westerfield and this is the Uglies trilogy and I call it a quote unquote trilogy because it was originally a trilogy. It was Uglies Pretty Specials and that was like the whole story and then like due to popular demand he wrote a fourth book which I also have back here called um, Extras. So I also have that one. I recently went back and reread the series. I still have the books. I first got the series or I got the first book in middle school and you can see where I wrote in like my name Monica Perez right there my cute little uh, middle school script and like the cover is actually already fallen off and I had to tape it back on I've had this book for a long time I love this series I was like really upset that it didn't get like the Hunger Games treatment like the full movies and everything but it does deal with a lot of sensitive topics. It does deal with self-harm, it deals with oppressive governments, it deals with violence, like it does, it deals with a lot of things. Um, so I can kind of understand why like other book series got like the attention over this series. And also this series came out a bit before the rest of those. This came out, the first book was already out and known by the time I was in middle school. So that's like 2006-ish. <laughs> I don't know the exact years, but let me go ahead and read you the summary of this book. Tally is about to turn 16, and she can't wait. Not for her license, for turning pretty. In Tally's world, your 16th birthday brings an operation that turns you from a repellent ugly into a stunningly attractive pretty and catapults you into a high-tech paradise where your only job is to have a really great time. In just a few weeks... Tally will be there. But Tally's new friend Shay isn't sure she wants to be pretty. She would rather risk life on the outside. When Shay runs away, Tally learns about a whole new side of the pretty world, and it isn't very pretty. The authorities offer Tally the worst choice she can imagine. Find her friend and turn her in, or never turn pretty at all. The choice Tally makes changes her world forever. God, so I know that only gives you about a sliver of what this series is about, but this series just covers so much ground, and I really think it is targeted towards 
the young teen kind of demographic and I really resonated with this when I first read it in middle school um, and I reread it recently and I still enjoyed it like I am 26 and I reread the whole series and I still enjoyed it like I honestly think this is a great series and I was really inspired to do this not only because of how much I love the series but because of how beautiful the original covers are so I got this book obviously you can see this is the original cover it is very nature and green and brown and blue kind of focus and it's got like a half cut of like Tally's face on there they redid the covers once this got a little bit more popular and re-released and I really don't like the new covers I'll put the new covers up right here the new covers are they're just I don't know they're like sterilized and they're more mass produced I think but the original covers I'll put the original covers up here I love them they've got like real people's faces on them they've got interesting color stories and I think they really portray the contents of each book really well so I kind of wish they'd save the original color the covers but here we are so I created a palette just for I would say the first book heavily based on the color scheme of this first cover. So here is my mock-up palette for this first book. I took the overall structure of like the shade placements and the amount of shades from the storybook cosmetics. So I'm imagining that this original cover would be on the front of the palette with some changes and then if you opened it up and it was a palette this is what would be on the inside. So it took me a long time to kind of get all these shades figured out and then I actually named each shade. I didn't do this for my next palette because it took a long time but since I had just reread the whole series and I had recently had an experience with this book I thought it was... <laughs> I had fun. I had fun creating the shade names for this. So the first shade is New Pretty Town which is the town that you go to after your operation and literally your job is just to be pretty and have fun. So it's like a light beige shade. I imagine this as a matte shade which would be a transition or a highlight depending on your skin tone. The next shade it might be a bit weird if you haven't read the book but it's called Cat Vomit and it's like a salmon color because the first line in the book, let me read this to you. The first line in the book is, the early summer sky was the color of cat vomit. Of course, Tally thought, you'd have to feed your cat only salmon flavored cat food for a while to get the pinks right. <laughs> the scudding clouds did look a bit fishy, rippled into scales by a high altitude wind. As the light faded, deep blue gaps of night peered through like an upside down ocean, bottomless and cold. That's an awesome opening line <laughs> just to put that out there but the salmon and everything I really wanted to have like a nice matte salmon color and so of course it had to be called cat vomit. The next shade I also imagine as a matte so this is called Shea and it's a golden like a deep gold color. Shea is of course Tally's new best friend who is the first one to run away to this outside world. And whenever I think of Shay, it's, it's a very complicated relationship between the two of them, which I also love because in this series, like it's a, it's focused on women. All the, all the main characters are women, which I love, but B, it shows full humanity. Like no one is one dimensional in this story, which I love because it's like this weird moral gray area. No one is a hundred percent good. No one is a hundred percent bad which I think makes this fascinating. So Shay is one of the most complex characters ever and the color I always imagine when I think of her is this kind of deep gold color. Next we have the shade Paris which is a light light kind of green olive color and I imagine this as a shimmer. I tried to make this like in the palette as a shimmer but it didn't really look right so I'm imagining this shade as an actual shimmer shade and Paris is the name of Tally's best friend who was actually a bit older than her so he got the operation earlier and he moved over the new pretty town and she was like really wanting to be with him but I think she had to wait like six months or so so he was ahead of the game there and I really wanted to focus in this palette I wanted some warm shades but I also wanted it to really reflect the greens and the blues of the cover but also the majority of this 
book later on takes place in the wilderness, in the forests. Like, and so I imagine rich greens, deep blues. I've got some brown in here and I actually really like this color scheme. Like I want a palette with this color scheme. The next shade is a matte olive green called Tricky, which is what they call, I guess, their mischief. Whenever they pull a prank or whenever they do anything, they call it a trick. The next shade is a deeper version of Tricky and it's called Hoverboard. That's the way that everyone, I guess everyone of her age demographic travels. It's you travel on a hoverboard. The next shade is Tally. So Tally is the main character, the girl on the front of the book. And I really based this on her eye color here. So she has like this green blue eye color on the front of the book. And I think they do mention that in the books, but this shade, it's just like a forest green and it's vibrant. So I do want this to be like a matte. There isn't going to be too many shimmers in this palette, I don't think. I think the only other shimmer is probably like ruins, but I really think mattes express uh, these colors and the story and I'm thinking way too deep into this, right? But I think really mattes would make the most sense for this story and for this setting. But I did want to throw in some shimmers because an all matte palette, well, it can work sometimes. I think I was a bit too gun shy to do an all matte palette, right? The next shade is David. And while David might look a little bit close to the shade Hoverboard, I imagine this one to be, I couldn't find like the exact like shade image picture to put in here, but I really wanted David to be a mixture. Okay, you can see between Tally and Ruins. So I wanted David to be like this green blue mixture that was a meeting point between those two shades. So it's supposed to be like a green, almost tealy mixture shade. And my ideal look would be to use like Tricky as your transition, Tally to deepen it up, David to add just a little bit more definition and then to use New Pretty Town as like a highlight. So that's how I think of this. The next shade, like I mentioned, is called Ruins. The city that Tally lives in, they do have ruins. So this is supposed to take place in like the not crazy distant future. It's like the 2100s-ish. Um, and so they do have like ruins of like our cities so outside of Tally's town is supposed to be the remains of like a city from like now and it's just they're just ruins at this point and I really wanted to express that in this palette because that location is a constant going back point it's very important and even throughout the whole series like up until the last book they play a huge role so I wanted them to have a role and I wanted this to be the most blue of the shade. So I literally like looked at the, the book cover and I tried to make it like this blue is what Ruins would be. All right, so our last row. <laughs> this is kind of the more neutral role. I really wanted to have this in here because like I said, the story takes place a lot in like the wild. So there's gonna be trees, there's gonna be everything. And I wanted to make sure we had kind of like a black brown and like a light brown beige shade. The first shade is just a light brown matte shade called Spag Bowl. And I know Spag Bowl wouldn't really be this color, but I, this is a story. So Spag Bowl is actually the meal that Tally basically ate nonstop on her first foray outside the city. And Spag Bowl stands for, I believe it's spaghetti Bolognese? Bol Bolognese? Uh, I cannot pronounce it. I have not been able to pronounce it ever since I first read this. Here's the word. I don't know how to pronounce it. But it is like a pasta, like spaghetti pasta kind of thing. And I know this isn't the right color for it, but eventually she eats this so much that it becomes like bland and boring. And that's kind of what I thought when I thought of like just a light brown shade. I'm like, it's just boring, right? But in this palette, I really wanted to include it. So that's why it's Spag Bowl. The next shade is The Smoke, which is just like a deep, rich, warm brown shade. The Smoke is the name of the group of, I guess, rebellious people out living outside of the city. And they live kind of like you would if you went camping today. So they live out in the wild. They have to like 
hunt for their food they have to do everything and this is so different from life inside the city where everything is high tech and you don't you really have to work for anything so I really wanted it to reflect in this like deep warm brown color which of course you would see in campfires in the trees probably in the tents probably in most of the clothes I imagine this color. Now the last shade, I really wanted to have a nice matte black in here, and the matte black here is called Dr. Cable. Dr. Cable is the quote-unquote an antagonist in this book series, but she also gets a lot of depth, especially in the third book. Um, and so in the book description where it says the authorities offer Tally the worst choice, the authorities is Dr. Cable. She works for the city and she's basically the one who forces Tally into this situation. And I thought, what better way to throw her in than a nice matte black? So that's my palette. I actually spent way too long. I spent weeks thinking about this and thinking of the names and like the color story. I actually really want this in a palette. I think maybe I could put this together with singles but it would probably take me way too long to find the exact shades I was thinking of which is why I wanted to start this in the first place. Moving on to my second palette. I didn't do shade names for this one because that took me a little bit longer to think of for the first one and I was just really inspired by the cover or one of the covers for this next one and this is a play. This is my favorite Shakespeare play and this is Macbeth. I love Macbeth. I actually took a tragedy course when I was in college and I wrote a whole paper, like 20 pages, on Lady Macbeth and I got an A plus from a Shakespeare scholar who was like visiting from Cambridge. Like, <laughs> I like Macbeth. <laughs> I was very much inspired by a different cover than one that I had. So this is actually the copy that I read in college and worked from. It's like got all these bookmarks and writing in the margins, but the cover itself is pretty boring. The cover I was most inspired by is this Folger edition. So this is the updated edition Folger Shakespeare Library, and it's got these nice purple tones to it. Uh, and I was incredibly inspired by not only like this cover, but the story. So this is the palette that I made for Macbeth. It is very purple and red leaning because of course a story about ambition and murder. Can you not like include red? Like duh. So I'm going to read the description from the back of this compilation book and it includes Macbeth but also talks about Shakespeare's tragedy kind of as a whole. What is tragedy? The Elizabethans defined it as a lofty play showing personages of great state caught up in a lamentable action that beginneth prosperously and endeth unfortunately. Whether judged by this or any other standard, the plays selected for this collection, including Macbeth, are considered to be the four central works of Shakespearean tragedy and must be included in any list of the world's finest tragic literature. And to make these plays more accessible for the modern reader, this edition includes the following special features. So it talks about how this specific book in general made this a bit easier for us to digest as students with introductions, with um, footnotes, uh, with the way they structure the play, because again, this is a play. So this isn't actually a novel. There are people speaking and there are stage directions, so it is a bit different. So this is my palette. I, of course, follow the same general layout of the storybook palette. Uh, in my mind, it would be this purple color story and then you open it up and this is what you would see. Again, I went a bit light on the shimmers. In the first row, I have a very light lilac shade, which I imagine as a shimmer. The next shade is a very light yellow shade that I imagine as a matte. The next shade is a light warm yellow slash gold shimmer shade. The next row has a bit of a deeper lilac shade. This would be a matte and I really wanted the color story of the cover of this book. So that whole first row, I really just took the, the shades from this cover and did like a light shimmer and then mattes going deeper and deeper. So you could create a whole beautiful like purple look from that first row. And then I really wanted to include like the red. So I went a bit warmer and then down to like a deep, not like it's, it is going to be a matte black, but I imagine it a little bit differently. It took me a while to decide on the types of yellows to include in this. Cause I, I personally pictured 
this it's honestly a bit kind of like the new Norvina palette which okay thank you Norvina for copying me that, that's a joke that is a joke <laughs> but it took me a while to think of the, the yellows because none of the yellows that I was picking looked right here and finally these ones did so I've got like a light gold like not as warm tone shade and then I have a deep like mustard yellow shade that I think would look really nice if you paired it with the reds in this palette or with the deep purples in this palette. The next row I have that deeper lilac shade again a matte. I have a bright blood red right here in the middle because of course bright red. And then the next shade over I have a deep burgundy red. The last row is actually one of my favorites so we have a deep royal purple taken almost directly from the cover of the book. And then right next door, we have a bit of a richer, different shade of purple. And it seems to be like the antithesis of that other purple shade. So we have like a warm purple and we have like a cool purple. And so I thought those looked really nice together. And then the last shade in this palette is going to be, of course, a deep black spot. Out damned spot. <laughs> So this one, I actually zoomed in and tried to make sure that it had texture. I pulled this from um, some texture things that I found on Google, but I didn't want this just to be a matte. I wanted this to have depth. So I was thinking if I were to actually create this palette, this would have some, not maybe reflex, but it wouldn't just be a matte black. It might be a matte black mixed with like a deep, deep purple or mixed with a deep, deep red. But I didn't want it to just be a like a flat matte black. I want it to have life and to like jump out of the palette because darkness and black play a huge part in Macbeth, of course. But oh, that's the shade that inspired me the most. But also you see it in the cover in like the black bar, which isn't supposed to be like actually a part of the cover. It's supposed to be just like a bar updating you. But I loved the way the black looked with the purples. So my first inspiration came in like this L from the purples and the black and then I filled in with the red and the warms because I knew I wanted to include a red in this palette because murder. <laughs> so that is my Macbeth palette. So there we have it. Those are my first two created storybook palettes. Let me know down below if you guys actually liked this video. If you want to see any more storybook creation palettes because I literally have a list of like five more books I could do. If I explain it this in depth, I could probably only do like two books, like a video. But if you guys like it, I could definitely do more. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.